Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Over there in the book of Chronicles 18, where you see that Ahab began to persuade Jehoshaphat to go down to Romat Gilead and go down there and begin to go against those people and kill them off. The same thing happens right here. That Ahab, when he brought the people together in Genesis 11, and they said, let us build a tower to reach the heavens. Ain't no way you're going to build a tower to reach the heavens. And God began to come down and scramble the language. I hear some men of God say that's the reason the language was scrambled in the world. No, that's not, that's not true. Don't believe that one. Theologians, the, theologians tell you that story. That's the reason language was scrambled in the earth, because they didn't take time to read out the story and know the history of what Babylon was all about and how the king of Babylon came about. It says that even in the midst that the, the great origin and the effort, even as it began, it was already, you know, it was already uh, labeled as being an antichrist from the beginning. Because number one, you tried to reach somebody who created you. Now, let me say that when I say this. Whenever you put yourself in a position of being that what created you, you done already messed up. When you begin to rebel against your creator or the one in authority over you, you can already pretty much shut your blessings down already. Because that proves to him in you, that proves to him in, to him in through, to you that you're the person that can take authority. Now, somewhere in life, God has given you the opportunity to have an overseer in your life that he may rule you, not to the point in a humanistical point of view, but guide your soul through that what it's struggling with. Some people feel that they're so educated, they got so many degrees on the wall, they don't need no man. Uh, to grab them. That's why it goes back over in the book of Psalms. It tells them when you go to the book of Psalms, we leave in uh, Psalms 12. I mean, Psalms 2. We want to flip over to Psalms 12, and I want I want you to show. I want to show you something in Psalms 12. It says on Psalms 12, over in verse 1, it says, "Help, Lord, for godly men has ceased." Now we're in Psalms 12. We're in verse 2, dealing with the era of kingship. But I'm gonna show you something over in Psalms 12, dealing with the verse of Psalms 2, verse 3 about how men come in the midst and try to build their own emperor. Matter of fact, we can still take the word as I'm in, as it is in my spirit. We can go over the book of Romans chapter 10, and we see that how God said his heart and desire that the people of Israel, that they might be saved. For he, he said he bear a mark that they had a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. For they were being ignorant of God's understanding, and they went about establishing their own kingdom, their own righteousness. And they failed. That's why the children of Israel stumbled every time. Even they were God's first chosen. They stumbled through everything they did. Why? Because of disobedience and hard-headedness. The same thing goes over here in the book of Psalms. As we flip over from Psalms 2 to Psalms 12, it says, Help, Lord, for godly men has ceased from the faithful. They have fell among the children of Israel. Listen to what it says. They speak vanity, every one with their neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart, they speak. Now, that's James right there. Now, they, it, don't take a, it don't take a strong interpreter to even know that. You ain't even got to be a good theologian to see that. You just got to read the word. That's just common sense right there. And they read the book of James. He said about the joy. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse times. Nor the trials of your faith birth patience, but let the patience have its perfect work. He made it up right here and said, a double-minded man, let him not think he received anything from God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you ain't got to read the Bible. When you try to two-time anything, it's a matter of time before you get caught. You can't keep running in the kingdom and running out of the kingdom. You can't keep having a good friend abusing them behind closed doors and then come in their face and speak good things to their face and expect them not to find out things about you. Words travel. Rumors roam. People's ears are open. Things get back around to people once you say something. Sometimes it's best to be who you are in front of that person and be the original who you are and don't try to change it. If you don't think you can be faithful to that individual, you can be nice to that individual, be the kind of friend you say you are, look, just leave him alone. You know, I hear the old people say, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. And that's really true. And it's really true that the word of God always tells us we do have to be careful for nothing, but do all things in prayer and supplication. You know, that, that, that the word of God may be known that's in us. It goes on over in verse 12, and I'm not getting out of verse uh, uh, chapter 2 of Psalms, so we're going to go back there. It says over here in verse uh, 12, over in uh, uh, 12 and 4, he said, For we have said our tongues will prevail, our lips are our own. Doesn't that line up right over there like God told him over there, Romans 12, or Romans 10? He told me Romans 10 that, 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 that he had a zeal that they, they, they might be saved. But 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 they had a they had a, they had a, they had a knowledge of God, but not according to the power. They they didn't want to they didn't want to line up anywhere. 
You know, they, they wanted the love. They loved the Lord, but they couldn't come to understanding, to come to grips. Too many things in your life can pull you off course to what God really wants you and designed you for me before he created you. When you start looking at circumstances, situations, individual cliques, clubs, titles, and positions, you, my friend, will get off course. Because the enemy is designed to drive you out of the inhabitants of what God has put you in. And when he tells his word over in the book of Jeremiah, 1 and 5, he says, there's a form that I put in you. When I created you, I call you to walk according to that word. I engineered you with a level of faith in a level of gift. That when you walked on the earth, I knew that no thing, could, I, I knew there was nothing I could withhold from you. Only if you walked in the gift that I gave you, that I may multiply that in seasons as you go. We, we know how it go. Give your kids a little bit of money, make them, make them accountable over a small thing. They get a little bit accountable over more. You give them a little bit more. You know, you, know, you, you help them and show them, you, gro you groom them up. You just don't give a kid a million dollars right off the back and give it to them. You all, my God, they'd be gone in a day. Because their eyes sometimes overload their stomach. Or overload their mind. They spend so much that they can't spend anymore. They're not going to be accountable of keeping record of what they spend. They're just going to go out and spend. They're going to always want what somebody else has. And it seems like they never get enough. And that's the way it is sometimes in the kingdom of God. It's too much competition in the house of God. There's too many people trying to compare themselves to another man of God or another woman of God in the house of God to try to be just like them. I'm not trying to be a Bill West. I'm trying to not be a Bill Gates. I'm not trying to be a Jack Hayford. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be any of these other men who have established their way to what God called them to be. My job is to stay in my lane and do the work that God called me to do. And when I stay in my lane and do what I'm supposed to do, then the word of God would fill me with that what I need. And as he felt desire, then he'll raise me to the stand the way he want me to be. Let's go back over to Psalms 12. I mean, Psalms 2. It says over in the uh, Psalms 2 in the fourth verse, it says, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in durations. Look, notice what he's saying. Then shall we speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his scorn displeasure. What is he saying? This, 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 this all pertains to to the second coming of the Messiah. God is going to quiet that particular person who feels that God is not going to show up and do what he wants to do. You know, a lot of people say he's not coming back. That's just a story. That's just a fairy tale that got in the Bible. They're telling all you Christians that our heaven is right here on earth. What well, good. I'm glad you think that way because there's going to be a separation coming soon. And when the day comes when he whipped that whip down here and that moth and leather started coming down on you and he starts showing you that he is the God of heaven that he is going to come back and do what he said he's going to do. You're going to reach out to him. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a time you're going to reach out too late. Because God wakes you up each and every morning as he do right now to be listening to the word, to take some kind of wisdom out of some of the ignorance that you got in your head, not believing that there is a God, that you're going to continue by doing all the things you want to do on your day, breathing his breath, sucking up his air, living in his flesh that he created you to be. And now all of a sudden you feel that you, you can't come out. You, you, you don't feel that what you have is not of God. It's of yourself. That you're man-made. That, that, that you're not, you're by, by a creator. You believe in the dull and theory segment. You believe you're part of a plant. You believe you're one of those things to walk up out of the sea, a uh, uh, tap hole into an ape into a monkey. That's one of the most craziest theological things I've ever heard in my life. From a tap hole, from a drop of water, from a tap hole to a frog, to a frog, to a man, to a monkey, to an ape. Come on, man. I mean, the flowers around you, because they grow, you want to be a plant, they're going to be the plant. Well, I put it like this. If you feel your lineage of some monkeys, then you're going to be with the monkeys. But I'm going to be with the Lord. You want to go be a monkey, then you're going to be with monkeys. It says over in the, um, the sixth verse, I'm going to read through this a little bit in the sixth verse here. He said, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Now, notice this. I'm going to just read a, a little breakdown of this right here which will take place immediately after the second coming. The Lord blessed men of Psalms, blessed men of Psalms 1, and the, and, and the crew of the kings of Psalms, in other words, those who were in together with Psalms, are one and same divine person. Notice what it's saying. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Son of God, is both Psalms. He will stand in contrast to the first, Abraham as man and king in the earth and over the earth. Notice what he's saying. The, the same divine person, the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Son of God, both the psalmist, will he stand in contrast to the first Abraham as man and king in the earth and over the earth. Notice God gave Abraham what power because of what his faith. He gave him dominion. He gave him everything he needed because of he believed Abraham was he was not. Now notice Abraham was counted for faith. He was counted for faith because of his righteousness. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't faith, but he was counted for righteousness that he received faith. You know, Abraham was given the opportunity because the way he carried himself before God and for he believed. So as he walked with Christ, God shone more on him favorably that he was called the father of all nations because the way he carried himself as being a man of God. You know, the Holy Spirit had even came on the scene, yet, but yet Abraham believed. He believed. Against all hope, he believed. God called him to be a father of many nations. The Bible gave him the ability and the court said to be able to call things according to Romans 4 and 17. He said, I'm going to give Abraham the ability to call things that be not though if they were. Because I believe that he's a man of faith. He's a man of character. He's a man of loyalty. He's a man that's walk upright. And I can trust him in my words. Same with Enoch. You know, look at Enoch. They say Enoch walked with God. He was wished away. Same thing with Moses. Until the people got in the midst of him, they said Moses was one of the most meekest men on earth. But what happened to Moses? The people began to get in the midst of him. They began to make him angry. They began to make him do things opposite what God had called him to do. Why is that? People will get under your skin in such a way that it'll cause you to alienate or fall away to avoid what God has called you to do. I hear men and God say, well, you know, you can't worry about that. But see, your mind is still all tangled up. You may not show it in the outer appearance, but it's still inside of you. Excuse me. And when it's still inside of you, you still have problems that you deal with. With the fact that you battling with that and you're trying to hold so much in that it's really killing you inside. You really want to let it out, but you don't know how to let it out. Well, don't, don't. Pastor Ellis don't have that problem. You know, if it's on my heart, I'm going to say it. God going to put it in the way it's going to come out. It might be a little sticky, but I'm telling you, it's going to come out. You know, if I say something's wrong and not right, then I'm going to let you know it's not wrong. Anymore. I'm not going to hold back. But I'm going to let you know, you can't continue to keep on living the life you're living and expect somebody to come up on you and say nice things to you when you ain't presenting yourself as being nice. You didn't get yourself right or you need to get up or you need to get out of here. You know, you, you, it's as simple as that. You can come in and be the person you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to present yourself. You know, you can, it's a whole lot of other churches you can go to. It's a lot of other places you can go to other than coming to the Harvest New Life Church. You know, I don't have no problem with that. People are passing and going every day. You know, it all depends what you're going to stop, when you're going to gain some sense of understanding that what God is trying to help you. When you keep on jumping around, like the word of God says over in uh, Psalms 1, he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the God and the standing way of the sinner, the sinner in the seat of the scoffer. You look right, you, you, you right over in verse 2, you can look over and look at it. But he says, his delight should be in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day or night. The third verse will really will get you, that he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Am I talking to somebody? A symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says his leaves all shit shall not with and what he does shall prosper. His leaves compose with the tree, the life, everything that man does and dies, everything Jesus does lives forever. Am I, can I say it again? Everything man does dies. Everything Jesus lives in lives forever. I need to say that again. Everything that man's ways do dies your thoughts die. God's ways live. Am I God that I should lie or am I a son of that man that I should have to repent? Now I'm speaking out of the book of Numbers 23, 19 to 21. God said his word supersedes man's word. You can go on down the highway and do what you want to do. But at the end of the day, God word rule and reign. Whether you're still on the earth walking in the flesh or whether you're going to get in the box, you're going to find out where you're going to go. All we got to do is look at what happened over there in the book of uh, Luke chapter 16. We, we, we know what happened to him, the rich man. You know, that, that was a decision he had to make. He saw that man of God, Elijah, sitting at his knees, begging for that food. But it came a time that both of them died. 
And when he woke up, he was right in the midst of hell, right in the midst of fire, burning like a piece of chicken, cooking over and over.